a governor who had a, a compassion for people, a concern for people, a man of integrity, uh, with good leadership skills. Um, and I found that in Governor Huckabee. There was not one day that he had a bad day that he was ever, that he wasn't compassionate and caring to people because it was sincere. He is genuinely interested in people, very warm. He's at his best one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, if you've ever been in a conversation with him, you know that he focuses totally on you. He uh, remember people's name and people new on staff and they come through, he introduces himself to them and you know, everybody be so excited. I cannot believe this. This is the governor and then a couple of days later, he still remember my name, but he's a very personal, down to earth person and he don't forget. The fact that he sees us as extended family and is always concerned about us, uh, remembers our birthdays and things like that. So I think he's, he's, he's a man of integrity and he's a friend. Governor Huckabee always remembers your name and that your sister was in the hospital and that you just got a new puppy and he always remembered everything about you so the next time you met him he was always asking you about that. He's just a big old teddy bear. There were times when he had to put a little aside the hat of Mike Huckabee governor and put on the hat again of Mike Huckabee minister and counselor. Everything that happens in society that's bad you come face to face with as a pastor and you know, that certainly was his first calling and as a pastor and under shepherd you're, you're to be one of, uh, to affirm and to calm, uh, to, to bring calm to people and to really reflect Christ. Uh, that's his underpinning. I mean that's his underpinning as governor and again as I said it, Huckabee, Mike Huckabee shines in moments of crisis. I've never seen a person in a crisis situation as good as the governor. He uh, took the time to remember people in their hurt and in their losses. The best I ever saw him though was in March of 98 after the terrible incident of the school shootings here at Jonesboro. Every person in Arkansas I think would join me in sincerely praying for the recovery of those who were wounded, for outpouring of grief and sympathy for those who have died today in a place that should be a place of safety and sanctuary. But Mike Huckabee went to that school less than 24 hours after those kids and those teachers had watched their schoolmates and their, their colleagues gunned down in front of them. I, can you imagine anything more horrible? And spoke to those people and comforted them. Most, most people don't even know about that because there, there was no media in the room. He wasn't advertising that. And, well, you talk about an example of Mike Huckabee at his best. Uh, that was Mike Huckabee at his best. Jonesboro was a, was a horrible tragedy. And, um, and I have had people tell me that, that that was a very moving meeting that he had with teachers. I've seen him sit and hold one person's hand and pray with them and cry with them over a, an intense personal, uh, something that's, that's, that's befallen that person. I've seen him do the same thing on 911. As the towers of the World Trade Center fell today, more than brick and mortar could have collapsed. The sense of security that we enjoy within our borders will have collapsed if we react with only rage and fear. I want to encourage the people of Arkansas to focus our grief toward the things that will help, starting with our prayer. 9-11, uh, of course, it happened early on, on the, the, the morning. And so uh, it was the next morning that we were all gathered uh, in, in the governor's conference room. And, and he was here, and he was speaking to us. And um, we all uh, joined hands, and, and he prayed. And I'll never forget that. Well, it was just a, uh, it was a prayer of hope. They might have been on rooftops, they might have been out, out on a bridge, they may have just been rescued by a helicopter, and I think his, his whole thing was to get them to a place where they could rest, they could regroup, uh, they could get together with their families, uh, and they could just have a moment's peace. From, a, uh, from an empty room at 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning, to a fully functioning command center six hours later that, by the way, operated flawlessly for 31, 32 days, something like that. 
That says a lot. And, and he, had that, he had that idea in his mind ready to use. We had a, a, a fully functioning command center, completely hardwired with high-speed internet, telephones all over the place. We even had a big screen television so that we could watch it. Where'd that idea come from? That Operation Care was a great idea. Whose idea was that? Well, it was the governor's. Well, the, the, one of the most impressive things about uh, uh, our effort in, in Operation Care Force was our uh, title. And uh, what we did, the governor personally called me and asked me what I thought about uh, uh, maybe some volunteer planes and pilots in the state, uh, maybe that they might want to do uh, something for the relief effort. We, we instigated some volunteer pilots and planes, and that's, that's what we used uh, and made several flights, uh, relocating people to several different states. And one thing that a lot of people don't know, uh, you'll probably shoot me for telling this story, but uh, that huge crisis is going on, and we're responding to it, and he is clear-headed, he's got a plan in his mind, he knows what he wants done, and yet at the same time, I found out later he had just gotten word that his house, uh, a water pipe in his house had burst probably three weeks before that. He hadn't been able to been down there, be down there. And his house had been flooding, the downstairs had been flooding from the upstairs for maybe three weeks. And so in the midst of all of this huge stuff going on, he's got a personal crisis that if you've ever had that problem happen, you know how difficult it is to deal with. His deep faith guides his life. And I've seen that long before he became governor. I have seen it after he became governor. I've seen it in private moments. I've seen it in public moments. It's not fake. It's, it's very genuine. And uh, it's the driving force behind what he is. The, the, what make him such a, a loving person and caring person is because he, the, he's in the, the word of the Lord. Well, I think for one thing, he was given gifts when he was born. <laughs> and he, he, uh, he has very much uh, taken advantage of every gift he has to the utmost. When you're with Mike Huckabee, you feel you're in the presence of someone kind and true and honest. And that's the way he's been 51 years. I think there are many times in your life that you just know when you're in the presence of a leader. Um, you just know that, that this is a person you can trust, that this is a person that's going to help keep you safe, that this is a person that has your best interest at heart. He was a preacher man that became governor. And what he, his core beliefs inside is what emanated. And he was able to do things on both sides of the aisle because of his honor and his ethics. I think that's his legacy.